Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to our celebration of Mass today. It's the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Um, And welcome to those joining us on the live stream. Uh, Again, I've bumped into a few people who who celebrate Mass together with us, but are, for a variety of reasons, not uh, making themselves present in the church. Margaret Taylor, known to many of you, I'm sure, celebrated her 90th birthday through the week garden uh, and she was telling me how much she and her husband enjoy, enjoy while celebrating mass in the parish although they are uh, shielding and confined to their homes at the moment so thank you for your presence um, which by your responses and by your shadows rather than by your faces um, encourage the other members of the parish who are keeping themselves and us safe by uh, keeping well apart so we've been listening to Matthew's gospel and we've been learning uh, through a variety of parables over the past few weeks. Well, we have an encounter today uh, and and also one which Jesus seeks to use as a tool for teaching. Um, And it's a cleverly sculpted uh, piece of of artwork that Matthew has presented for us uh, with this episode from the life of Jesus. So there's um, there's bits missing as well as bits there uh, and the bits that are missing are quite intriguing. That we might celebrate worthily, we call to mind our sins and we ask God's pardon. You were sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve you in sincerity of heart. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord in his anointed, to his anointed, to Cyrus, whom he has taken by his right hand, to subdue nations before him and strip the loins of kings, to force gateways before him, that their gates be closed no more. It is for the sake of my servant Jacob, of Israel, my chosen one, that I have called you by your name, conferring a title, though you do not know me, I am the Lord, unrivaled. There is no other God besides me. Though you do not know me, I am you, that men may know from the rising to the setting of the sun that apart from me, all is nothing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to the psalm, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord glory and power. O sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell among the nations his glory, and his wonders among all the peoples. Give Give the Lord Lord glory glory and power. power. The Lord is great and worthy of praise, to be feared above all gods. The gods of the heathens are not, but was the Lord who made the heavens. Give the Lord Lord glory glory and power. power. Give the Lord, you families of peoples, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and enter his courts. Give Give the Lord Lord glory and power. power. Worship the Lord in his temple. O earth, tremble before him. Proclaim to the nations, God is king. He will judge the people in fairness. Give Give the Lord Lord glory glory and power. power. The second reading is reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus and Timothy to the church in Thessalonica, which is in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, wishing you grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We always mention you in our prayers and thank God for you all, and constantly remember before God our Father how you have shown your faith in action, working for, worked for love and preserved through hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. 
We know, brothers, that God loves you and that you have been chosen, because when we brought the good news to you, it came to you not only as words, but as power and as the Holy Spirit and as utter conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went away to work out between them how to trap Jesus in what he said. And they sent their disciples to him together with the Herodians to say, Master, we know that you are an honest man and teach the way of God in an honest way, and that you're not afraid of anyone because a man's rank means nothing to you. So tell us your opinion then. Is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus was aware of their malice and replied, You hypocrites, why do you set a trap for me? Let me see the money you pay the tax with. They handed him a denarius and he said, Whose head is this? Whose image? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, Very well, give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I uh, used the wee phrase a couple of weeks ago, um, and I know it intrigued some of you because you mentioned to me later that you had found it an intriguing phrase. The phrase was that sometimes Jesus' questions are more demanding than his commandments. And I thought, well, that's maybe an interesting way into things. So last week I said to you another thing which I found intriguing And again, it's rang a bell with some of you that Jesus teaches his most profound truths by means of fiction. That is to say, he makes up a a narrative, a parable story, and it contains within it great truth. So there's very demanding questions, and there's truth in narratives which are untrue. Well, here's a third intriguing thing that I'll mention. Sometimes... It's the words that are significant, and sometimes it's the gaps that are significant. And I've got a challenge today because the point of the gospel isn't actually said, it's implied. So we've got to have a wee, have a wee think about it. Uh, I've brought along, I've put my hand in my pocket, and in a break with tradition, the parish priest is removing money from his pocket. Um, I, I've got a, a two pound coin here. And... Uh, on the reverse side is the image, the head, the name of the head of state, as is customary in very many countries and has been for many millennia. The Romans didn't invent putting their head of state on coins. It was done long before them. But it serves to illustrate the point. There are two things, as it were, in the equation on the gospel. There is the person and the coin. Okay. So he just says, have you got any money on you? They say, yeah, here we are. And he says, okay, let's take a look at it. So you can imagine the scene of Jesus speaking to a person who has in their hand a coin, and on the coin is the image of the head of state. And he asks a question about the coin. He says, Who's, whose head is this? Whose name? Whose image? And they say, Caesar's. And he says, okay. So give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and then he says and to God what belongs to God but he doesn't tell us 
the thing that belongs to God. But it's the other thing in the equation, not the coin, but the person holding it. Because in the way that this coin bears the image of the head of state, I bear the image of God. And you might remember that from Genesis chapter 1, verse 13. Man and woman created in the image and likeness of God. So if we give to Caesar what has Caesar's image on it, the coin, we give to God what is imprinted with God's image. That's us. And those parables that we've listened to over the past few weeks have told us what God is like and therefore told us whose image we're made in and whose image we should reflect. So we began seven weeks ago with parables about forgiveness. And then we listened to parables about stewardship. And then we were listening to parables about the choices we could make, the two sons. And then we were given parables about producing a fruit in due season. And then we were given parables about being invited already at the party. And then last week, the second half of the parable, it was about our responsibility to bear, to comport ourselves according to the dignity of that to which we're called. So all of those parables were to teach us what God is like, that he entrusts us with a task, that he invites us to make choices, that he says it doesn't matter how late we are to the party, as long as we realize that we're invited, and indeed we're already there, and we're invited to live our lives accordingly, and to show forth that which we have been gifted so God is all of those things and the invitation is that we should be all of those things too because we bear the image of God. And the more we are those things that God is, the more we are the disciples of the Lord Jesus. And of course we recognise as ever the process of growth and development that goes with that. We're not supposed to be perfect at it just yet but we're supposed to be working at it in order to be more and more perfect at it as we go. So for the courage of wisdom and growth in the life of discipleship, to bear more and more authentically the image of God for each other and ourselves, we pray today. To make known our needs and prayers in God's presence, we stand. Grant to the church the grace to be steadfast and endure in all difficulties, to avoid false doctrine and to keep uncorrupted the faith entrusted to her. Make her a strong defence for all people in times of trouble. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bring an end to the warfare and strife that mar the harmony of the world. Turn aside the abuse of power and save your people from the leaders whose selfish aims are leading to disaster. Bring greater concern for the preservation of all that has been wonderfully created. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Give us constancy in faith when we feel under pressure and make us a source of comfort for those whose lives touch our own. Bring a happy resolution to any disputes that damage the life of this community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are suffering from natural disasters, for the victims of war and human cruelty. Comfort those who are persecuted for their faith and those who have been betrayed by people they have trusted. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Receive the souls of the departed who have endured affliction and temptation and come to their rest. Freed from all the perils of this life, may they know the perfect peace of heaven. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need at this time. For the members of our parish community who are shielding, we pray for those who are seeking to protect themselves or others. Pray particularly for those who join us on our live stream. And we pray also for those who care for those who are sick or elderly, whether they be members of the family or whether it be their professional task, which they execute with generosity. Pray for our young people who will return to school this week and for those who teach them. The Lord will help them grow in knowledge and love and keep them safe. And finally, we pray for the members of our parish community, sick or housebound, and those who care for them. And we pray for our dead, particularly for those who've died recently and those whose anniversaries occur about now, especially those we've been asked to remember in prayer. That they may all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. God our Father, you call us to discipleship. You call us to bear your image. Give us strength, courage and wisdom in the choices that we make. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for all your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by these mysteries which we serve. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. And now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ Jesus our Lord. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as together with them, without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed also your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through suffering and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your own right hand, we proclaim the works of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on this oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ handed on to us, and grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, and your entire holy people, we may walk your ways with faith and hope, and strive to bring joy and trust to your world. Remember our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the doubt his faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Apostles and Martyrs, St. Conville and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Christ Jesus, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Let's pray with confidence to God our Father in the words the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you. Nick. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ lead us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in these heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age, and so prepared for gifts that are eternal. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are uh, allowed, as you know, 50 people for Sunday Mass, so there are 50 of you here today, so thank you very much for your presence and the mutual encouragement that that brings us all. Um, There are various things, as you know, available in both porches, including little crucifixes that Pope Francis blessed for me uh, when I was in Rome, uh, asked us to pray for him, to remember him in his ministry. Uh, And so please help yourself and take for those you know would appreciate such a gift. Also, um, additionally, I have in the porches uh, a, a November list and a little envelope for it. Um, we, we, we seem to have lost so much of our Catholic lives together uh, over the past few months, but I determined that we should, in the month of November at least, do what we always do, which is remember those gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, those who have handed their faith on to us. So we'll be remembering them uh, at each Mass in, in November. So if you'd care to take the envelope and the list and complete the list and put it in the envelope together with your offering, which supports me for the month of November, as you know. Um, I'd be very grateful to you for that. I hope you have a lovely day today. I hope you have a, a good week too. And we remember, of course, those not able to join us uh, for Mass here in the church, but who join us um, through the wonders of technology. Let's ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for your uh, great and ongoing generosity, which enables us both to provide food and toiletries uh, to those who need it in in Linwood. Uh, Thank you for that. And uh, uh, you can leave toiletries also at my house as well as here in the church.